Hi there, welcome back to tutorial 8. So in this tutorial, we represented, and this is the classical uh, external dynamics in a Kadaulo 12 Firefox. So if you, you go to a website, you read, download the file, so you should have that structure similar to this one, probably less file here, have more sense that maybe you, you need. But as usual here, you will have different meshes already discussed this one. So we go to the fluent case and see that we have three different directories, different mesh data structure. Okay, so I will go and, and open the first mesh uh, rectangular domain. Okay, so you see here that you have two different files and also the supported data for validation. So let's go there and open one case. So fluent case, we go for rect rectangular data and I will go this one four deck, which means four degrees. Okay. So for, for, before I start, I just want to remind you what we're going to do. It's just basically this classical case and something very important. We're going to, to do it when setting the case. Uh, remember when computing the forces, you need to adjust your, your axis here, your reference axis. Okay, so you have two options. You can change the angle of the of the physical air, the physical angle of the airfoil. Okay, you can put it at four degrees or ten degrees, whatever you want. But there, that requires redoing the mesh and geometry. Or you can have a uh, a fix. The you put your airfoil at zero degrees like this, and then you change the the incoming the incoming velocity. So I'm going to show you here first. Let's run the the, the case. So if you go here, graphics mesh. See that we have the, the airfoil, okay, rectangular domain, and we put it at four degrees, okay? So for that, that here, it means that the, the physical angle of attack is to four, four degrees. So let's run this case, okay? So the user, you follow your vertical workflow here. So let me start from the torrents model. So here we're going to use the K omega SST, okay? So in the previous tutorial, we didn't use but this one, you can use it, but remember that you will need to update the, the, the inlet conditions. But in this case, let, let's go K Omega SST and the false auction. Okay, so you keep going here, materials. Okay, you set the properties, the air properties. Okay, if you, the standard air properties is incompressible. Then here in the main, you come here and you double click here and you can remember that they change the properties of different working fluid. You, need to set that select here okay and so some conditions your operating conditions you set your reference pressure then boundary condition each of the boundary of the surfaces that you define here you can define boundary conditions so here we have just one inlet outlet and this one we set the slip walls and then the airfoil there you no know, slip walls and uh, we keep here, then we go reference values. This is the values that we use to normalize compute coefficients. So remember to set this. And now methods as usual, choose the default method. This is a good or uh, <clears throat> a good option now uh, for for this problem. This is the default proposed by Fluent. And then your so the, the relaxation factors also the default values are okay. Then go report definitions and start to define all the reports that you want. So see here that we are, we have just the y plus value and then we have the leaf and drag coefficient. But let me click here and see that when you click in drag, see that we have the drag is compute is computed in reference with x and y. Okay. So remember that in the case that velocity here is centering like this. So the drag is parallel here and the leaf perpendicular. Okay. And this is the convention I like to use. Okay. Instead, instead you use the other convention that you change the angle, you will need to update those angles. Okay. This angle here, when you compute the forces, you need to, to update. This is the, the, the direction vector. Okay. The, the, the unit direct direction vector. This end, you will need to update that value here when you define your inlet velocity and see that in this case, we say magnitude normal to boundary, but you can gi give magnitude and direction vector. Okay. So 
nothing to do here. You, you have many monitors we can initialize. Okay, so let me initialize using values and, and let's run. Okay, so we run it. Okay, so residual CLCD maximum Y plus. So see that very fast solution. Okay, we get here everything is not a <clears throat> it's not oscillating anymore. We can take it that the solution is, uh, is steady. And your Y plus see that this mesh is wall modeling, okay? So now we can go here and check for some colors. So see that you have your static pressure or here you have your velocity and you can access all, all your variables that, that you have here. So for instance, you can plot tolerance quantities okay so to regulate energy you can change here the range so let's put five there let's see here that click to range okay so where you have values large values okay in red let's say it's where the to regulate energy tolerance model mobile is kicking in okay i see that close to the walls Okay, it, it is a non-zero value because we're using the wall functional y plus more than 60. So it's a non, <coughs> non-zero quantity. The same way you can select here the turn viscosity. Okay, so I'll to branch here and see that this is again give you the turn viscosity where the model is kicking in. Okay. So you go here, let me reduce this. And see here is where it is added. So see what, what you have here is that in these boundaries here, see that somehow the, the, the model, it is computed some towards viscosity there. Okay. So this is in probably you, you will need to revise the inlet conditions or the wall. Probably I, I left the walls, top and bottom wall. I left those as <clears throat> I, I left in, the, in those one the, the slit conditions here. I, I have no slit. So probably you need to revise that to, to eliminate that. But what is interesting to see here is that see that the why it is important. So let me go back here to viscosity to put those walls far from, from the body. Because in this case, it might happen that if you have this wall too close, it might happen that that will influence <clears throat> will influence the solution here. Okay, so see that you have to to be very careful. Okay, when putting this one. So usually the criterion is that you you, you need to put those walls far enough so there are no no gradients close to the to the body. Okay, so you have all your quantities here. Effect is viscosity. Okay, to run the viscosity ratio. Okay, so this one, let me go here. Okay, okay, so this is the one that I think we were looking previously. Okay, so see that here. Okay, so this is what was the one that we were looking previously. So this is the ratio between the, <coughs> the molecular viscosity and the total viscosity. And see here that you, if you look at this one, you might have the impression that something's happening here. Okay. But remember that here <coughs> will be laminar. So and see here that in the wake you have where the model, it is working the mass, putting all the, all the viscosity there. Okay. So out to range. Okay. So this is how you do your, you can access all variables. And then also remember that you can put, uh, you can plot the solution. Okay. Here you have the plots, a Y plots. So a X, Y plots and see here that we divide it in suction and pressure side. And I like to do it like this usually when doing airflow, because here you have the colors and you see suction pressure side, you have a static pressure, or you can compute here the pressure coefficient. Okay. Or you can plot the Y plus value. So let's go into turbulence and plot Y plus. See that you have the value here and see that, that, that air for, okay, you have the maximum value around 60, but it might be better to look now at the average value. Okay. But 
see here in that actually the average you compute the average will be something something about 40 okay so remember that also you can go into <clears throat> here surface integrals reports and you can compute those quantities so you can go here facet average turbulence worldwide plus here and see that you get it that you have an average about 32 so this is a, a wall modeling mesh okay so see that now instead of looking at max maximum you look at average you have you have different uh, <clears throat> A different perspective okay what is going on so important set your monitors and also how you set your monitor sometimes may be a good idea to check maximum so times it would be better to check average values okay so i prefer uh, i like to set up bosses then okay maximum and average okay so in this point what we're doing is checking now the the the, the forces okay so here also you have the reports, okay, so you can go and compute your forces here. Or you can come here in this reporting definition. I already have the definition here, so you just press compute. Okay, so you have the same here. Okay, here you will have physical forces, okay, in Newtons, and here the coefficients, everything normalized. So see that here we have our values, okay, for let's say, let me compute again. So this is for CD. Okay, let me put it here and there. And now let me go here again, and do the same for leaf coefficient. Okay, and we have it there. So now let's compare because we have experimental data for validation. Okay, so in the files that you download, you will that have all that, that data there. So as you go here, in this case, surface data, see that you have this there and see that if you open this one you have to hear your data and now you can compare okay so see that the leaf coefficient you have a very good agreement and usually getting the agreement with drag coefficients the difficult ones so see that there is some different there but kind of is around the world park okay we're there following the trends but this is this this is the most difficult one and here what it says that uh, uh, using in this case we're using wall functions and say that wall functions it might they tend to they tend to be very accurate. There are some situations that it would give you some some, some differences. So see here that we have uh, a difference between experimental and the simulation, but also see that the experiments also there are some uncertainty. So see that the actual angle measured there is 4.04. .04. Here is here, here we're precisely up four degrees, so there may be some influence there, but see that we have some differences. So it might be better to run, or you can run also at, at <clears throat> using a much finer mesh and see the differences. That much finer mesh will give you a closer agreement here, okay? So this is a, a relative uh, large uh, Reynolds number. Also, you have the, you need to be careful with the data that, that you're using. So see here that we're using three transition, that is fourth transition. So remember what I say that CFD simulations they have the tendency to 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 get a, to be, to have a better agreement using uh, forced transition data. If you use natural transition, okay, these coefficients will be different. So here I think I have that data. So see here I have forced transition, okay, for different methods, and see here that you have all these coefficients. And then when you have free transition, see that you have different coefficients. Okay, the, the largest difference here will be the for the drag coefficient. Okay, so this is if you use this data, you will have problems getting validating because it tends to be uh, you need more accurate meshes solvers and usually for free, for natural transition. It's better to use if you are interested in this one a transition solver. Here we're using now uh, the traditional transition uh, models. So this is the, the case, the first mesh four degrees and now let's open the other mesh okay so if you go here by the way I forgot to say that in this case uh i'm saving cd and cl i chose to to save the 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 output here report files in output files in text files so as you go whatever you're running the, the direct directory you have the file see here that you have these text files so here you're going to have the iterative convergence so it's always a good idea to save this one, but it's up to you, okay? So let's open the other file, read here. 
and it's the same measure, the same idea, but it's at zero degree, okay? The physical angle, now we put it at zero degrees here. Okay, so see that is there. Okay, your mesh, and let's run this case. So the setup is exactly the same. Okay, so see again, we're saving all these files. Okay, and let's go and let's run this one. Okay. So basically you do like this, uh, no, I want to overwrite, just to construct this kind of plot, not to do the, the polar like this. So see that this is, you have it as an exercise. Okay, you have here, different results okay and now you can run your simulations using different models so see here that i'm using uh k k omega st okay and see that here we put it here and we can do our validation okay so the difficult part in cfd for air folders is this predicting well here the maximum here the maximum leaf and also the the stall pattern okay because here see that the the stall pattern it is a brute, severe, it goes suddenly down. And see here that the torrent model tends to be smooth. So this is difficult to predict. And here what you need to, to have the right prediction like this, you need to use transitional models, okay? That are more, more accurate in this region. But here in this linear region, any any turbulence model will have the tendency to be very accurate. Okay, so see here, it's a very fast simulation. See that everything is stable. Okay, as we are expecting here, well, we have CD, CL, your residuals. And again, you can go here and start to plot color. So see that symmetrical solution, you go here, your pressure, okay, you zoom in and you will see your boundary layer, but remember we're using wall functions and your maximum white plus is something about 45, but it might be better to check the average value. Okay, so let's see what what is it, the average value in this case. So we have x, y plot, pressure, and suction side. And let me go here and wall y plus. And see that again, see it will be an average something about 30 towards the trailing edge probably will go in the buffer layer. But again, we, we, we can take this mesh for granted. That is a, a, a good one. So to be sure you can go and do the computation here fast average and see that we're in 30. Okay. So it's this sweet spot. And uh, we take this mesh as a good one, but now let's rerun this case. Okay. But see what, just to show, I want to show you that this is very important when doing the, this kind of simulations. So, and now let's say that is, I want to run back zero degrees. Okay. But I want to change this angle. Okay. And I have the, the physical incident here, zero degrees. Okay. So, okay. Before setting that, okay. I, I forgot you can compare also with your the coefficients, so I put hill there, I don't need the hill. So you can compare your, your coefficients, compute, uh, pa, 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 monitors here. Okay, with the experimental results, I'll see that in the case zero degrees, see that in zero degrees, the flow is there as a touch. We have a very good agreement, okay? And you can do the same for CL, okay, compute. And as you compare your CL with the experimental that you have it here. Okay. See that CD and CL. CL, you have a non-negative value. So again, see that the angle is not zero. Okay. And usually, but it is oscillated, but it's a very small value. So we have a good validation for zero and four, but what I want to show now is this angle. So the advantage, uh, what is mentioned that advantage of having this mesh you put it at zero degrees and then you rotate this angle is that you can sweep all angles of attack okay without modifying the mesh instead you want to modify the geometry you will need to do the mesh for each angle okay i prefer to do it like that but it's up to you we're going to see that there should there must be the, the same or similar results okay but the difference here that look at your boundary conditions okay so you have inlet and outlet but it's, we want to change now the angle you need to also 
change the boundary condition. So now this is an inlet, but also this is an inlet. So we need to start to change the boundary conditions and this will become outlet, outlet, inlet, and inlet. So you have to be careful, extra careful here. So let's go here and change that. So I know that the bottom will be now a uh, velocity inlet. Okay, so I play that and the top, I know I, it will be a pressure outlet. Okay, apply. So it will be like this. Okay, the same. So see that we set everything. Okay, so see that you have inlet here and the outlet you have two outlets, okay? So the, here you have your setup. So this is the thing that you need to, to do when you change the incoming free string angle. So in this case, at the inlet, let's set up the value. So if you click, here, click there, see that now we choose magnitude at, in direction, okay? So 90 meters per second with this core will give you the range of that is six million. So see that now also let me choose that you need to give the, the direction vector, okay? So this is, put it like this, this, and this. I already computed, you put it there, apply, and that's all, okay? And remember also the, in the initial conditions for the inlet value. So here I'm using relative high values. Okay, it might be better probably to choose lower values and or read the validation reference and see what values they are using. So in this case, we're using this paper. So I think it's what we recall that they are using lower values. So it might be better to use lower values. It's up to you, but see that this is all another source of, of uncertainty. So we define here the inlet velocity, and now let's do the same with the bottom. But here I have this option, copy, and I can copy from inlet to bottom, okay? Here it lets you see only the, the patches that have the same type. And now I copy those values automatically. So I, I don't need to redo everything manually. Then outlet, nothing to do. Here, nothing to do. And the walls in the airfoil, you have normal walls. So see that this is how you do your setup. Then you have to be careful also here in your report definition because you need to update the reference angle here, okay? So your reference is axis. So here that you go CD, okay? And now CD, you follow this notation here. So the drag dilation, this is a rotation matrix now for your new reference system. It's given like this, cosine of alpha and sine of alpha, alpha in, in radians. So let's put it here. So remember, put it there. Cosine and sine. Okay, so I'm running for four degrees. See that I can compute it and now it's giving me the value. Okay. And now you do also for CL. So CL, see here that you have the rotation. So you just put your minus sign there. and cosine. Okay, and you have your rotation. So this is fundamental step, okay? Otherwise you, you, you will have different, <clears throat> different coefficients, okay? So put it okay there, and you have all your setup, okay? So if you have any other location in your case setup where that depends on these angles, you need to update it, okay? So in this case, that is the only dependency here and inlet velocity. So we change everything, now let's recompute. So for an inlet and see that now, okay, what happened here that I still doesn't see that angle. Okay, so, okay, here, make a mistake. It's here where it should be. Okay, apply, so, sorry. Okay, it should be, because that's that, okay. I put it in the wrong location and the same here. Okay, it's here where I should put that angle. Okay, so be careful of what, where you copy and paste. So now that I have that, I can go and initialize here for an inlet and see that you have your direction vector. 
okay, in this direction and the other up component going up, that it will define four degrees. Okay, so you have there, and now let's rerun. So pretty much you see that nothing changed, but it changed that you need to set up your new reference reference axis. And that's also see that you have your Y plus, so see that recall previously we have this value and then CL, CD, we have the same trend. Okay, so as you go here, compute, see that you have your CD and compute, you have your CL. Okay, you, now you can compare with your experimental results. Okay, and now pressure here. So this is the thing that you have to take into account that you need to remember when setting these cases. And let me check here turbulence. Uh, you have to I want to change this. I want to check uh, this one. Okay. So here you have your turbulence viscosity ratio. And let me put 10 here. And see that you have the flow entering here with a given <clears throat> some given values and see that you see the influence here and this is very important as you see you set out this might give you different solutions okay the the levels of, of intensity so as i say it's a good idea read the paper to see what values they are using but i think these values are relative high the ones are using i am using so let me put there two and two and here again two and two and let's rerun. Okay. Okay. So better will be better. In this case, will be better to initialize again. Okay. So see that now this value change. Obviously, it's been wrong. I think we were going to 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 have different results. So see that we reinitialize. And let's see what we have. Very fast convergence rate. See that all your quantities are here. You have the reported here and see there are maybe some slight differences okay but you have your results okay so this is a case i really love these cases because here you can spend the whole week validating and testing different turbulence models so in this case we use the k omega okay and you can do like in the previous case you can now go k epsilon try all the combinations see what is the influence of of in this case using every different no k epsilon no variant with different wall function formulation so see that here the k epsilon you, you need to specify near wall treatment say k omega is y plus insensitive okay so this is the preferred option or you have this parallel matters as well so you can select that one okay so this parallel matters is very good for external aerodynamics okay so you can test it so see that you have a small jump here in your coefficient that it went up a little bit, but it's still there. The values are there close to, to the experimental ones. So this is the, the, the in this case, okay, we, we have this wall modeling mesh. And let's now run again, but instead of using this rectangular domain, see here that we have this C domain. So let's use this mesh so you can close this one, open the other case. Okay, so as you go the rectangular C domain, see here that you have two K setups, zero and 12 degrees. I will go and open 12 degrees. So in this case, I'm not rotating the geometry. Okay, so as you go and you zoom in, you will see what we're doing is rotating the inlet velocity. See that this is it's called C grid because C grid because it has this shape of a C mesh. So this was using a structural measure. Okay, and see that this is a very nice mesh, very refined. This is wall resolving. Okay. And see that in this case, the angle, the physical angle of attack is always zero, but what it changing, changing is the incoming velocity. So it's 12 degrees. So as you go here in the case setup, nothing changed. Everything is exactly the same. But here the inlet, you define your direction vector. Okay, so see that. We have our direction vector. Okay, and see that in this case, the intensity level is set to two and two here. And okay, in the previous case, I was running at 90, probably a little bit uh, larger than the actual value. So that's why also they were coming a little bit higher. So you need to check all these dependencies. 
Okay, but what is interesting in this one also is this degree. See that the inlet boundary corresponds to all this. Okay, so you just need to set this. Okay, and then the outlet. You keep reading, you reset reference values, everything. The report definition, see here that also computing moment. And didn't put here the Y plus, so let's add Y plus, so new surface expression. I want to have the average, okay, in this case. And you select your airfoil, so see that the airfoil is a single surface, it's not divided in many surfaces, so I give it a name. Average. And report to plot, and you have it there. Okay, you plus, y plus average. You go initialize. I will use the hybrid initialization recommended method, and now we can run. Okay, so we're using in this case k omega sst standard method. As you, you press calculate, you know, overwrite, it will go there and run your simulation, you have all your coefficients, so see that CL, CD, CM, and Y+. plus. So see that this is a very... Uh, okay, sorry, I choose the wrong variable, I plot in there the average pressure, so I will update it. So see that now, in this case, we have a different convergence rate, okay? See the influence, even the mesh can have an influence in your convergence rate. So see here that the residuals kind of, they look that they are stalled at the beginning. Okay, then you have these oscillations and then you let it run a little bit and see that now they, they are going down. So this is why also you need to let run the simulations for some time. So see that even though here it's not, you don't see any oscillation here, you cannot say that, okay, I will stop here. So you, when you see these behaviors is that and even if your residuals are not isolated, it's a good idea to let it run to see if something happens. So this was like a, the turbulence model working a little bit. Okay, so now you let it run and see that here now it went down and you have the, the right convergence, okay? So again, you can go here and plot your value. So somewhere here you have, so it's a very large domain. So that's, remember what I say that user external dynamics stuff like this. So they need to be very far from the wall. So the influence is negligible. So probably in this other case, it was a small domain. So maybe they will, they will have an influence. Who knows, you, you need to quantify that and you access everything here. So see that now you have the weight there, much nicer resolution and we can go here and we can plot your quantity. So see the Y plus, see that this is below one, it's something about zero two. Okay, so it's, it's very it's well resolving, well resolving. So, and actually when we can go here and we can plot, if I go to turbulence variables, see that as you plot two rank kinetic energy, see that now close to the wall, the value is zero. You are not modeling, you are resolving everything. So as you recall the previous case, you have the jump uh, you, you have a, a large value here, okay, it wasn't going to zero. In this case, goes to zero because you are resolving. So you are going, integrating into the viscous sub layer, okay. So let me go 50. So you can see the progression, okay, from zero to a peak value. Remember that they're throwing kinetic energy and those will peak it somewhere in the boundary layer. So see that you have there all your progression same with all turbulence quantities so i like to plot here uh turbulence viscosity ratio okay and this one can give you because this ratio can give you an idea of the edge of the boundary layer now usually you have it here and this will represent your boundary layer not precisely but can give you an idea so you can use this one to control if you have a good mesh okay and ideally Okay, you you should have your mesh. Okay, that should have a smooth progression in this this region close to the body. Okay, where you have this large difference now, this large turbulent viscosity ratio. Okay, it should be a smooth pro progression, so you are sure that you are resolving well any grading that you have there. Okay.
And as usual here, you have your coefficients. So we see that we're much larger values and see that we have CD, okay, 0 0.0147, and you have there your experimental data. So for 12, see that is, again, see that is 12.12 .12 actually, not, not 12 precisely, but see that the values are, are there. Okay, very close to, to the to, to the experimental one. And well, this is what you, you now you, you can do is just change, do a, a, a sweep of all angles from zero to 20 and do the, the validation. Also, you can test different trans models. So this is also a beautiful case because you can try all models and see the influence. Okay, so it will be a small influence in this case, we can, you can try all of them. Generally speaking, it's turn aerodynamic airfoils. The one, the models to use is the Spada Almaras and, or the K Omega SST. You can also go and try this one. Okay. Later we're going to address transition in, in another tutorial. And then also we're going to talk about these corrections using some airfoils. So at this point, okay, what else we can do? Okay. Let's rerun, but now four degrees. Okay. Just to show you again, to remind you how the changes. So remember you go here and you should have your, your direction vector. So let's put our direction vector here and here. And remember, in this case, we're cutting by changing the free string value angle. So you will need to update your report definitions. Okay, so you need to update the one for leaf. Okay, so this is minus, okay, will be minus here. One sign, cosine, okay, for leaf and also for drag. So cosine. So this one is we are doing parameter study, uh, studies. You can parameterize this with no problem. Okay, so. We put it there. We updated the angles. Now everything has been updated. We can go here and you can initialize. And now you press run and you are running at four degrees. Okay. So see that it's relatively easy to do this and, and sweep all angles. So now it's running. CD, CL, so everything is stable. This I need to update. This one I shows the pressure. It shows the wrong quantity. And see that the scale is residuals and now going down. So see that in this case, the turbulent variables are the ones that are having problem converging. They have a slower convergence. So it might be an idea. Probably this this is nothing bad. Okay, <laughs> by no means. But if you start to have problems. See that here you can go and update your on the relaxation factors might be the <clears throat> you, you might update this. Okay. So we go here and now you have, okay, your quantities here and see that with this wall resolving mesh is you compare with your experimental results, your validation data for four degrees. See that now the drag coefficient is very close to this one and your drag, your leaf coefficient also very close. So see that when you want that extra accuracy and you didn't have separation, adverse pressure gradient. So remember that here you have adverse pressure gradient. Okay. So we studied this concepts in aerodynamics. Okay. So probably here. Uh, when you start to have adverse pr pressure gradients, it's better to, to have wall resolvements. You go wall modeling, recall that you have those corrections, okay? The wall enhance here in K epsilon, you have the non equilibrium wall functions that you can use. In K omega, you didn't have that option, but you can start to enable these corrections, okay? So, nice case. So, I invite you to do from zero to, to 20 to 24 or, or to 20. So see that this toll will be something about 18 and getting the precise stall can be tricky. You have your data there. So getting a good agreement here, linear re regime, I say it's easy. Okay. Also in, in drag, getting this stall pattern. Okay. That is tricky. Okay. 
but you here after here we're using transition model so see this circle here this is the transition model this is the spalar the k, k omega sst so this is all for this case uh thank you for attention see you next video bye